Hey AP STAT students, today we, our goal is to make sure that we can compute and interpret probabilities involving a binomial distribution. So we've talked about a few different distributions. We've talked about the normal distribution, a basic probability distribution, and now we're talking about binomial distributions. Our last distribution we're going to talk about is the geometric distribution. Okay, so let's get started with the binomial distribution for today. In order for something to be a binomial distribution, you have to check and see if it has the binomial setting. So that's one thing you have to know how to identify. Okay, how do I know what a binomial setting is? Just got a quick phone call, so if I repeat myself, forgive me. Okay, so binomial setting, in order to check if something has a binomial setting, we can use an acronym, and that acronym is BINS, okay? What does BINS stand for? B is the first one. B stands for binary. Binary means each possible outcome, or the possible outcomes, I'm sorry, of each trial can be classified as a success or a failure. What does that mean? Like if I would flip a coin, I would get heads or tails. If I'd shoot a basket, I'd make, I'd make it or I'd miss it, okay? Binary, we either have a success or a failure. Next, I, that stands for independence. Trials must be independent of each other. Now, in order to check this, you don't have to check it like we did in the previous unit. All you have to do is you have to state that the trials are independent of each other. So for example, like flipping a coin, flipping a coin, you just have to state, yeah, each coin, like if I flip heads on one coin, that has no bearing on if I flip heads on the next coin. Those trials are independent. If I make one basket, that has no bearing on if I miss or make the next one. Those trials are independent of each other. S, or N, sorry, is next for bins. N stands for the number of trials are fixed. So you're going to see something like, what's the probability that out of 10 baskets that they shoot, they'll make three of them. Or if they flip a coin 10 times, three of them will be heads. The number of trials are fixed. They're going to take a certain amount of shots. They're going to flip a coin a certain number of times. They're going to roll a dice a certain number of times. You will see that n equals the number of trials are fixed. And what we do is we signify that by a little n equals that number of trials. All right, next is s. s stands for success. The probability of success is the same for each trial. For example, if I flip a coin, the probability of flipping heads will be 50% each time I flip that coin. Bins, this is how we can tell if something is a binomial setting. Now let's practice together. Let's go through some scenarios here and decide, is it a binomial setting or not? Okay, the first setting that we have here is roll a fair die 10 times and let X equal the number of sixes. So we're gonna record if it's a six or not each time for 10 times, okay? B, success or failure. Our success is it would be a six. Our failure would be, it would not be a six. It'd be a one, two, three, four, or five. That's okay, right? We're rolling a fair die 10 times. P.S., we have the game Tenzi, you guys. If anyone's played Tenzi, my son found one number cube, one die, that there was two twos on it. Something fishy there, okay, but anyways, Okay, we roll a fair die 10 times. We're gonna record the number of sixes that we get each time when we roll it out of the 10. So we're either gonna get a six or we're not gonna get a six. Success, failure, binary is okay there. I, independence. Is it independent each time I roll the dice? Yes, it is. If I get a six one time, so that doesn't guarantee I'll get a six the other time. And it doesn't change the probability of getting a six the next time. They're independent of each other. Probability of the first roll doesn't affect the probability of the next roll. Oh, sorry, spoiler alert. N, N is equal to the number of trials are fixed. And then in this case, we are rolling that fair die 10 times. So lowercase n is equal to 10. 10 times we are rolling that die, fixed number of trials. S, the probability of success is the same each time. Each time I roll that die, the probability of getting a six is one out of six. We have a binomial setting here. Yes, binomial. Okay, next, B here. Shoot a basket 20 times from various distances on the court. 
let y equal the number of shots made. Okay, so I'm going to take a basketball shot. I'm either going to make it or I'm going to miss it. B, binary, success, failure. We're okay right there. Right? Success, make the shot. Failure, we miss it. I, independence, right? If I make one shot, theoretically, that should not affect the outcome or miss it if I miss it too. That should not affect the outcome of what happens on my next shot. Now, I know some of you sports buffs may disagree with me, like you can get in your head and, and mental, all this mental psychology piece. Yeah, being an, an athletic person myself or being part of a sports family myself, I get it. But theoretically, each shot's a new chance, right? What happened before should not affect what's happening on your next shot. So I, the probability of the first shot does not affect the probability of the next shot. And the number of trials are fixed. We're shooting at 20 times. As the probability of success is the same on each shot. We have an issue here. Okay. Various distances on the court. When I play peg with my son out in our, our um, driveway out there. Okay. And I do that quite a bit in the summer. Me shooting a layup or even a free throw is much easier than what we determined our three point line, okay? The probability of success on a layup compared to the probability of success on a free throw or maybe even an outside shot, whatever, those are gonna be different. So the probability of success is not the same on each one. As a result, this is not a binomial setting. Now, if you're sitting here watching the video and be like, what the heck are we doing? Remember, what we're trying to do today, guys, is we're just trying to find probabilities based off of a binomial distribution. But first, we need to make sure that that distribution is actually a binomial distribution. So we're talking about this as a binomial setting. Okay, part C. Observe the next 100 cards that go by, and let C equal the color. So we're going to record the color. So one card goes by, we record that it's red. The next card goes by, we record that it's blue. The next card goes goes by, it's red again. What is our success? We're just looking at the color. Color, no color, no, that won't work. This is not a binomial setting. Okay, the purpose of this video is to make sure that you understand what a binomial setting is. Thanks guys, next video will be over how to figure out binomial probabilities from a binomial distribution.